Survival games have been the hallmark of this channel for the last several years. I've played most of the best in this genre, but decided it might be fun to take my own survival journey and try the worst. This is the first trip into the depths of the survival gaming genre to find out if the worst survival games ever are actually as bad as people say they are. Today we'll be embarking on an adventure, a pirate adventure in Out of Reach, a game described by many as one that was abandoned by the developers where you unironically play as a castaway that has been abandoned on an unfamiliar island. The first choice you have to make in Out of Reach is which server to play on. There are three game modes, Standard, PvE, and PvP. But as you can see from the server list, this really doesn't matter much at this point because every server is empty. Since this is my first adventure into Outer Reach, I decided to go with the PvE server with the lowest ping, so Marilia it is. Next up in the final step before becoming a pirate is character creation. Surprisingly, there is a decent amount of customization, but since it's likely that I won't run into any other real players, there's no need to spend too much time here. I awaken on a beach with only a basic tool in hand and nothing else. To my surprise, there is a massive building on the shore just ahead. Then comes our first quest, find something to eat. Throughout the game, you'll be guided along by quests to teach you how the game works and introduce new systems. Before looking for food, I can't help but to see what's in the enormous structure just ahead. Perhaps some NPCs or maybe some free loot to help me get started. Unfortunately not, this appears to be a player-built structure likely abandoned long ago that cannot be entered due to being on a PvE-only server. Maybe the small building in front of it can be accessed or has been left open. Again, no luck. It's dark, so looking for food could be dangerous, so for now I decide to see if my tool will allow me to gather resources. And it does. Chopping the tree gives wood, and you may have noticed that when doing something for the first time, a tip appears in the top left of the screen. Many of these will be obvious, but some are actually pretty helpful. After chopping the tree for a few seconds, it falls, and my first thought is I can keep chopping it for more wood, but that's not the case as it will eventually disappear. It's quite dark, and there's one more large building nearby, so I decided to check it out and see if I could find some food. Just like the other buildings, it too is inaccessible, and worse yet, inside I can see rows of planters containing crops begging to be harvested. There's probably enough food inside to last me through the entire game, and while I can't get to those, it does at least let me know that at some point I'll be able to grow my own food. As the darkness slowly begins to fade, I spot what appears to be an antelope in the grass field ahead. Perhaps I can hunt it down for some meat. Every time I get close enough to attack it, it bursts away, and I simply do not have the speed or stamina to keep up with it. As I explore the surrounding area, I spot a tiger and a horse. With nothing but a basic tool, the tiger is likely not worth fighting, and the horse will surely run away just like the antelope. Fortunately, I spot a few berry bushes nearby and complete the first quest. Next, I need to craft a weapon, and for that I'll need flax and rocks. After gathering a few of the berries, I receive a notification that I've leveled up, but not paying attention, I fail to realize for now that each time you level up, you get a skill point to assign. Just offshore, there's a shipwreck, and I decide to investigate it, but quickly realize my stamina is draining too fast, so I return to shore to let it refill. I also stumble upon the skill tab and see that I have one skill point to use in the gatherer category. Skill points are unlocked pretty regularly and typically provide increased resource gathering, reduced durability usage, or reduced resource cost, although there are a few that don't fall into one of those categories. With my stamina replenished, I dive back into the water and head for the shipwreck. Along the way, I realize that for a game like this, it actually looks pretty good. It's not AAA good looking, but for a game of this nature, the visuals are more than serviceable. Reaching the rock next to the shipwreck, panic starts to set in. My stamina is gone, I can't climb onto the rock, and I quickly begin losing health. Intended or not, I discover a small sandbar that allows me to refill my stamina and continue looking for a way onto the ship. After some janky exploration on the ship, I find nothing. All the doors are locked, so I jump back into the water and return to shore. Looking back, I probably should have dove under the water to see if there was a way in. Back to the task at hand, crafting an axe. I find some flax, and I'm able to make some rope, but I need stone. I don't see my tool in my inventory, and I think I've lost it, and fortunately I'm able to craft a replacement for free. Later on I realized that I hadn't lost it, but it was equipped in the slot not visible in the UI. Tool in hand, I'm able to harvest some stone, and then a rhinoceros appears out of the jungle, so I flee to the beach to craft my axe and complete the quest. Next I need to build a shelter. At this point I discover a few things. First, there are a lot of building options. Second, the building system is easy to use. And third, I need a lot of wood to build even a small house. I gather enough wood to build a small foundation and spot another tiger nearby and decide to take a break from chopping wood and try my luck against it. Axe in hand, my initial foray into combat in Outer Reach does not go as planned. I'm given the choice to start from scratch or respawn in bed and choose the latter only to realize I had not made a bed yet and I've respawned quite a distance from my house. I then travel through the night across the island back to my house and proceed to get back to gathering wood. After several hours I finished my house but forgot to record it so you'll have to wait a little bit longer to see it. On to the next quest, hunting. With bow in hand I spot an innocent antelope and begin my pursuit. Here I experience what some of the negative reviews mention, that the combat in the game is quite janky. My arrows go exactly where I'm aiming and it's hard to tell if they even hit the antelope. Finally, I land the final blow and can harvest the remains. I hunt for a bit longer, then head back to my house. It's not quite as large as my neighbors on either side, but it will make do for now. 
Next, I build a campfire to cook my fresh antelope meat and see that there are a few other cooked recipes as well. Checking my journal, I see that I need to craft a bandage to complete the prepare for hunting quest, so I do that and unlock the next quest, go hunting, which I've already finished the first two parts of. I make a torch to complete that quest and immediately unlock the next quest, explore the unknown. As is common up to this point, and in the future, I've already completed one part of it just by playing the game, however, it does introduce a new system in the game, Mining Ores. Rather than immediately going and looking for a cave during the day, I get sidetracked and don't find one until night is set in. Surely nothing could go wrong exploring a cave at night, so I enter with just my torch to light the way. Inside, I walk right past several ore nodes as I'm distracted by all the wooden structures, which I believe at the time to have been placed there by the developers, but later realize that they are almost surely player built. I head deeper and deeper into the cave and finally decide to hit one of the odd looking rocks, which of course is copper ore, complete the quest and unlock the next quest. I mine some more copper and tin and then realize my torch is not going to last much longer and immediately search for an exit. Time to build a furnace to smelt the ore, an anvil and a smithy. The furnace is actually pretty cool. You have to place wood in it, pump the handle to start the fire, and then smelt the ore. My next task is to craft a bronze axe which will utilize each of the three crafting stations I just built, but first I need to find more copper and tin so back to the cave to get what I missed the first time. After the mining expedition I return home to make my new axe. To do so requires making the axe head in the furnace, then placing it on the anvil and hammering it into the proper shape. Once it's shaped properly, I take it to the smithy and craft my new axe. The final basic survival quest is to build a ballista and fire it. This seems like it's meant for PvP, but I need to complete it to progress to the advanced survival quest, so I go out to gather the resources needed to craft it. I place the ballista on top of my house, stretch the cord, realize I only made the tip of the ballista projectile, Craft the full projectile, insert it, and fire it. Basic survival quest complete now, it's one of the advanced stuff. First up is farming, which was alluded to earlier on in my adventure, so I place some planters and plant the flax seeds and mushrooms I found earlier. The farming in Outer Reach is nice because you simply plant the seeds and come back later and harvest the crops. You do not have to water them like you do in most survival games, but the trade-off is you don't always get seeds when harvesting. At this point I'm several hours into the game and I've been introduced to most of the systems in the game. The next quests are collect water, make use of herbs, and fortify my base. The water is used in cooking recipes and apparently to regain stamina faster, but I never used it for that purpose. The herbs are used with the water for cooking recipes. Fortifying my base is essentially pointless because I'm on a PvE server with no one else, but I need to do it to move on to the next quest so I do so. I also discovered that Outer Reach has quite a few traps and defenses that would make PvP pretty fun if anyone was still playing it. After knocking out the three aforementioned quests, I get to the best quest so far, Discover New Islands. What would a pirate game be without sailing the high seas? It's time to build a boat and see what else this world has to offer, but first I have to go on another mining run to get enough bronze to build the boat. War is mined and smelted, now it's time to drop the boat in the water. I then spend several minutes looking for a way onto the boat as there's no ladder, not realizing at the time that pressing the spacebar lets you climb in. Fortunately I built it close enough to my house so I'm able to jump into the boat from the second floor. Sailing is surprisingly pretty good and out of reach. The boat handles like a car making changing directions very easy and the wind doesn't affect your speed. In most survival games with sailing, the wind can be your best friend or your worst enemy, but here you just go in any direction without worry. Eventually I see another ship on the horizon, and knowing there aren't any other players on the server suspected to be a pirate NPC ship, so for now I avoid them. My suspicions are confirmed as I run into a pirate ship later on, and they immediately begin firing cannons at me. With no way to defend myself, I flee as quickly as possible. Sailing into the darkness, I reach land once again and find a house built on the water. Like all the others so far, it's a relic of a past player that has long moved on to other games. I reposition my boat down the shore and check my quest and see that in order to complete it I need to moor my boat which of course requires rope that I do not have. Luckily the island has a few flax plants so I am able to craft rope, moor my boat and complete the quest. The next quest is to mine ore found on one of the islands. I have no idea how many islands there are and assume it's not on the original island so I explore the island I'm on and after finding no iron set sail again. By chance I spot a treasure chest on a beach and stop and check it out. Inside I find gold coins, wood and a treasure map. Upon inspecting the map, an X is placed on my map, indicating the location of more treasure. The treasure is near my house, so I sail back and go looking for it. This time it contains gold, copper ingots, wood, another treasure map, and cannonballs. I also remember that on my way back I passed what looked like a pirate outpost that was not far from the treasure, so I go looking for it. I was correct, it was pirate NPCs, but they are armed with guns and I have no armor or ranged weapons that can compete with them, so I flee back to my house. Several hours later, and with no luck finding iron, I buckle in for the first time search for information on the game. I come across a Steam forum post from 2015 that has a rudimentary map of the game and includes the location of Iron Island. I had been searching north of my original location, and Iron Island was on the other side of the world, south of my original location. The game only has a few islands, but based on my exploration up to that point, and seeing the size of the islands, I would have likely spent dozens of hours looking for Iron Island. Before journeying south, I craft a few pieces of armor in case I run into any pirates on the island. 
Upon reaching Iron Island, I spot a cave that surely contains iron, so I jump ship and begin exploring. On top of the cave entrance, I find my first iron node. Seeing no other way in, I swim into the cave in complete darkness, expecting to reach land inside. I quickly realize my stamina is running low, and I'm too far from the entrance to turn back, so I frantically search for anything to climb onto. It never happens. I drown inside the dark cave. I then respawn on my bed and realize I've lost my new armor, the little iron I found, and worst of all, my boat. Back to mining I go. Fortunately, the ores respawn pretty quickly, so I'm able to build a new boat and head back to Iron Island. This time I go during the day and see a cave I hadn't seen before. I park my boat just outside, and inside I see wooden structures. More relics from the past glory of this game, and with them I'm able to easily navigate the cave and find iron. Unfortunately, while inside the cave I heard cannons firing, and suspected pirate NPCs may have attacked my helpless boat. Upon exiting the cave, I confirm my suspicions and see no boat, but remember my original boat was just down the shore. I see two other boats, but not mine. I had not moored it to the dock because it was built by another player and did not expect to leave it for so long. It was either destroyed or despawned, so I have to make my third boat. The good news is in the iron mine had a lot of copper and tin, so after going back in and mining enough of it, I build the boat and head back home. I smelt the iron into steel, make the blade for a steel sword, craft the sword, and finish the quest. Only three advanced quests left to go, and as is often the case, I had already finished part of the next quest. I completed I needed to trade with a pirate NPC, so I gather my gold coins and wait for the notification that a pirate ship is on the horizon. Upon receiving the notification, I set sail north to find the friendly pirate ship. I board the ship, put my sword away, and talk to the pirate merchant, who has quite an offering. Unfortunately, I do not have enough gold to buy the pirate weapons or armor, so I buy the only new resource in my budget, Vulcanite, which is used for building. This completes not one but two quests, as I have apparently already met the requirements for the quest that followed. This left one quest to complete, travel like a captain. The final quest requires placing cannons on my boat, building a glider, and flying the glider. The cannon requires steel, so I have to make another trip to Iron Island, and the glider requires quite a bit of animal hide, so I have to do a fair amount of hunting. A few hours later, I'm ready to finish the quest, so I place the cannon on my boat, then I head up to the tower I built on a nearby hill to assemble and fly my glider. Upon crafting the glider, I am immediately put into the glider and am flying, which is pretty amazing. After a little over a minute being airborne, I go in for a landing, and crash. After respawning, I gather my belongings and check my journal, and see I have finished all the quests, and that's where my adventure ends for now. Having made it this far, I can see why many players left this game frustrated. Out of Reach has a pretty good foundation to be a good survival game. Is it a little janky? Yes. Does it look a little outdated? Yes. But it could be a pretty cool survival game if finished. As evidence from my own exploration of the server I played on, and from reading the reviews of many players, this game once had a pretty strong community. It would have been great to play on it during its peak with a full server of people, but sadly those days are far in the past. Today you will find servers mostly empty with 5 or so average players and less than 20 peak on a given day, and I cannot fault anyone for quitting the game. It feels like it was about half finished when the developers moved on. I completed all the quests without needing any of the armor or weapons other than a bow and arrow. The only armor I made was part of the first tier. Most of the advanced items in the game seem to be tailored towards PvP, although I guess they could also be used to siege a pirate outpost. I experienced everything Out of Reach has to offer except PvP, naval combat, and attacking a pirate outpost. The first two seem out of reach, no pun intended, as it will be near impossible to engage in PvP, and sailing solo makes naval combat all but impossible. I might however gear myself up and take on a pirate outpost, and maybe build a little bigger base. My final thoughts on out of reach are, it's not an awful game by any means, certainly not the worst survival game I've ever played, but I cannot recommend playing it because it feels like it's half-baked and there is no sign of any additional effort being put into it by the developers. This was the first of hopefully many worst survival game ever videos. Hitting the like button will let me know how many of you are interested in seeing more videos like this. I have a handful of games lined up for the series already, and if you have any you would like to suggest, let me know in the comments. If you want to help make more videos like this possible, check out my Patreon via the card on the screen right now, where you can watch all of my videos ad-free, usually before they are published on YouTube, as well as gain access to additional content not posted here on YouTube. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.